Hey guys, time for another vlog. Since last Friday I've been quite busy questing. I've managed to do a total of six quests, two of which were pretty hard. I'm going to talk about each quest I did, so this video might be pretty long. Feel free to just listen to this while you're playing RuneScape or something, because I don't have much video footage to show you, other than screenshots and one boss fight that I've managed to film. So firstly, on Friday night, I did as a first resort. With all the awkward items required for this quest, it was quite surprisingly fun. For anyone that needs to do this, I'd recommend reading parts of the dialogue when you're talking to the ogres. It was pretty funny. I do look quite like the ogres and how dumb they come across as. It makes me laugh. The reward itself leaves something to be desired, since I already have 99 woodcutting and fire making. The XP rewards were pretty useless for me, but... Free Hunter XP is always good, since that's a pretty click-intensive skill to train sometimes. Anyway, next up I completed Wild Guthic Sleeps, which is the boss fight that I decided to record, because before I did it, I heard that it was that fight where you get all your stats boosted to 255, which was pretty epic when it actually happened, so I thought I couldn't miss up an opportunity to record that. So here's some footage of me fumbling about doing the fight quite badly because, you know, I'm not the best player in the world, but I do try. The majority of the quest itself was actually pretty cool, but it was a bit lengthy and I got a bit, well, it got a bit tedious at points, I thought. But I actually really enjoyed infiltrating the Black Knight Fortress and getting the Elite Black Knight gear, and that's... That's actually my favourite gear in terms of looks at the minute, so I quite liked getting that. And the rewards for the quest were absolutely amazing. 400k XP to use in any skill above 65, and all mine are above 68 at least, so any skill for me. 400k XP in Dungeoneering, as you know, I hate Dungeoneering, so that reward got me up to 77. I'm just quite determined to get to 85 Dungeoneering so that I can go and kill Frost Dragons for decent money and never have to worry about doing another dungeon in my life ever again. Because, to be honest, I don't really care about the Dungeoneering rewards. Uh, I bought the Scroll of Life of Farming. Uh, the others I'm not so fussed about. I got the Anti-Poison Totem for doing uh, Pyramid Plunder. But in terms of chaotic weapons and stuff like that, I just really don't care. I'm fine with my whip, to be quite honest. So, anyway, as for the quest rewards, oh, there was also the uh, dragon lump, which is required for making the dragon plate body, I think, or something like that. Or the dragon full helm, I can't really remember, but it sells for a mil, and as a quest reward, having an item that sells for one mil is, <laughs> is quite nice. Yeah, it's the best reward for a quest that I've known, personally. Unless there's something that's escaped my mind. Anyway, next up I did the Legacy of Seergaze and the Branches of Darkmire quests, which are both part of the uh, Vampire series of quests. I never really liked those Vampire quests before, to be quite honest, but then again I don't really like the eastern side of RuneScape with all the swamps and stuff, because it's a bit depressing. Although, I did actually enjoy these two particular quests because it has a really interesting story. Usually when I do quests, I just generally skip through the dialogue, as you might have been able to see from my quest guides, uh, if you've seen them. But these two quests, I actually find myself slowing down just to read the dialogue, which I never usually do, so that was pretty cool for me to want to actually do that. And the vampires in these quests are so much more hardcore in, than, oh, the twilight twinkly vampires and such. And they actually look really awesome as well with the big wings and demon faces. Ugh. I, I just loved the general uh, Maya Ditch area, which is where the quest is based. I think it's Maya Ditch it's called. But I could actually go as far as to say that the Branches of Darkmire is actually my favourite quest so far. But then again, I can't really remember most of the other quests, because it's, it's been a long time since I've uh, actually got my quest cape before. Uh, but the, the rewards for the quests 
Uh, Legacy of Seagaze was a bit lackluster in terms of rewards, nothing really worth mentioning, just various XP. But the branches of Dark Mayor rewards, oh, they were actually pretty damn good. Lots of various XP, as well as 150k XP to use on any skills you want. Which I obviously put towards Dungeoneering again, which gave me level 78. And I also got 77 Slayer, which was pretty nice as well, just to top it all off. And then there's also the Draken's Medallion, which you can use to teleport around that eastern runescape area. And you can teleport directly to Barrows, which is really, really awesome, because I hate making trips to Barrows traditionally. So I might actually start doing Barrows trips every now and then. So it's a really cool thing to have that medallion. And it's really easy to recharge as well, so no biggie if it runs out of charges. If there's one thing I love about quests, it's the cool rewards and, well, sometimes the story, like in this particular series of quests. For me, cool rewards include the XP lamps to use on any skill that you want, and convenience items like the Draken's Medallion where you can just teleport wherever you want. So yeah, that's pretty cool. One thing I actually noticed while I was actually doing the Branches of Darkmire was that someone was there training range. So I'm thinking about checking that out in a bit more detail and if it's actually good I'll make a little mini guide on it. It'll only be a few minutes long because I'm not... well... It's a bit too late to make a quest guide for Branches of Darkmire because I didn't record it and I've already done it so... I'll just show you the methods and what the XP rate's like and how to do it etc because what's particularly good about that area is that there is a prayer altar next to all the uh, vampires that you attack and what you use to attack them is uh, stakes which is like throwing knives except they're super effective against vampires you know if you know your traditional uh, vampire myths you'll know that a stake to the heart will kill them or something like that I don't know Maybe I should read up on my myths before I go spouting it, but anyway. If you decide to go and try out that method of training range, if you know what I'm on about, then don't blame me if it's terrible XP, because I've not really checked it out. And yeah, so anyway, after that I did Clockwork Syringe. If you're a fan of the pirates, like I am, because I absolutely love the Pirates of the Caribbean films, then you'll most likely enjoy this quest. It wasn't too long, the requirements aren't too bad, I mean, uh, 74 smithing is a bit of a pain, but, you know, the rest of the requirements are pretty alright. And there was quite a lot of variety in this quest, I found, more so than in the other quests I've mentioned, because there was a lot of different sort of styles of tasks that you had to do. There was bombing runs, there was a boss right at the beginning of the quest, spoiler alert, and there was also a bit of tugboat action. So that was pretty fun. The rewards... As with a lot of the lower requirement quests, left a lot to be desired, but I believe it's the first quest to offer Dungeoneer and XP as a, war a reward, sorry. So that made it worthwhile for me, because any free Dungeoneer and XP is pretty damn good. Last and definitely least, I did Dealing with Scabaras, I believe it's called, on Sunday night. Not gonna lie, I didn't really like this quest. It was mainly just annoying and tedious and just a bit lackluster. There wasn't too much going on. The story didn't really bother me. It's... I don't know, I just have a thing against the desert in RuneScape. I don't like it. <laughs> Maybe because it kills you. I don't know. I don't feel safe in the desert, so that's probably why I don't like it. But the rewards were also kind of shit, but there is the ability to make an enchanted water tiara, which I believe holds water runes in place of water skins, so you don't have to have loads of water skins that you have to keep refilling, you can just 
put loads of water runes in this tiara and you'll be able to drink for a very long time. So if I ever want to power mine granite, then that's always an option to have, which will be pretty nice. Anyway, here's a quick screenshot of me getting 79 Dungeoneering after running a few dungeons with James and one of his friends. Uh, I know you'll be shocked to see me actually doing Dungeoneering after all the shit that I've gave it throughout this video, but it was actually bearable for me doing it as a three-man group because it's not too big, it's not too small. Still getting kind of decent XP, kind of. But anyway, this video is going on long enough, so I'm going to quickly switch over to some game footage to show you what I've got planned for the next few days or so. Okay, so just quickly, as you can see in my quest log, I am currently in progress with Do No Evil. I plan on ticking off all the easier quests, such as the Elder Kiln, which I've heard is quite easy, uh, within the like Toxket Dill, Salt in the Wound, and the Prisoner of Glue Free. I'm going to do Ritual of the Majorat and Nomad's Requiem last because they are Grand Master Quests after all and I'm not looking forward to them. So I just thought I'd quickly show you as well uh, one of the miscellaneous updates for today was the total XP if you hover over your total level which is pretty nice. I've got 130.8 mil XP overall. It makes me feel very, very sad. <laughs> um, oh, one other thing. Wait one second. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly show you this. Here's a rune essence pouch, or pure essence pouch, whatever. Here's some pure essence. Left click to fill it left click to empty it. Fill, empty. Fill it, empty it. One more time in case you didn't get that. Fill it, empty it. That's a pretty cool update, I think. Will definitely help with nature room crafting or something like that, but anyway. Enough of the rambling, I'm gonna go do some more quests and I will make another vlog this weekend, I think, so goodbye.